message from our future president of the United States of America. My fellow Americans, it is me, Green Bear. What are you doing here? Oh, I am your press secretary, uh, Red Bear. Uh, you're gonna press my clothes? That's pretty cool. I'm gonna enjoy being president. No, no, no! I'm not gonna press your clothes. I'm gonna talk to the press. But no one's gonna be depressed when I'm president. <sighs> oh, brother! <laughs> that is my big brother. Okay, so, uh, where was I? You were, uh, think about to introduce the story? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, we're gonna read all about presidential elections, and this is very important. Listen closely. I'm listening. Because you have to know what it takes to vote in the elections so you can be prepared to vote when it's time for me, Green Bear, to run for uh, President of the United States of America. Which is not gonna be for a while. I know, but it's never too early to be knowledgeable and know what it takes to participate in the American democratic system. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you, Green Bear. Uh, are you ready to learn about elections? I know I am. The Little Book of Presidential Elections. Here we go. This book belongs to us, of course. Lately, you've probably heard a lot about the upcoming presidential election. Maybe you've seen news stories on TV. Tonight in the news, the presidential election. Uh, oh, and they're just like busy drawing and stuff and there's the parents watching the news. But I'll tell you something, when I was a kid, I was watching the news, you can too. It's just interesting to know what's going on in the world. Or you may see stickers on cars or signs in yards. These are all signals that an election is near. But what is a presidential election? Let's turn the page and find out. By the time you get to the end of this book, this book right here, you will know all about the process of electing a president and why it is so important to vote. For me. Yes, for Green Bear. Ready to learn? Just turn the page. <laughs> so exciting. A presidential election is a very special time. Why? The calendar is open to November, first Tuesday of November, because an election for the President of the United States of America only takes place once every four years. That's right, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, every four years. A presidential election is the process of voting to choose someone to be the leader of our country. Every person who has the right to vote gets to help choose who will be president? That's a pretty big deal. That does not happen everywhere that everyone's voice is heard. But here, it happens. Who has a right to vote in a presidential election? Today, anyone who is a citizen over the age of 18 can vote. But even if you're not over 18, it's important to know who is running for president and what they stand for. One day, you'll be able to vote too. Exactly, just like, well, you'll be able to vote, Green Bear will be able to run. It's good to start knowing how it works now. So what does it mean to vote? Easy, voting is a way of making a group decision, kind of like what everyone in your family wants for dinner. Uh, it looks like dad wants spaghetti and meatballs, ooh, yum, a uh, burger and fries, can never go wrong with that. Pizza, another fan favorite. But what happens when everyone wants something different? Ah. Whoever has the most votes wins. Now, sometimes people are gonna disagree over small decisions, like what's for dinner? Although here, burger and fries, one. Spaghetti and meatballs, ding, one. Pizza and salad, ding, ding, ding. We have our winner. But it can also happen with very big decisions, not just small decisions like dinner. Big decisions like who should be president. And elections determine the winner. A presidential election starts with candidates. Well, for me, I wanna be your president. Candidates are the people running against each other for president. The candidates, you'll see them just like this on the news all the time, giving the stump speech, they say. The candidates give speeches to let people know what they believe in and why they think they will be the best person for the job. That's right, they're telling you because they're applying for the job. They are a job applicant, and it's kind of like you're doing the hiring, so you're like, mm-hmm. And then what do you think about this? And what do you see yourself in four years? Blah, 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 that kind of thing. Sometimes candidates disagree. Sometimes they argue over important issues. 
Actually, they argue a lot. You probably may have noticed on the news, but that's normal. Having a difference of opinion is okay, but it is always important to be polite and respectful, always listen to what others have to say, and if someone disagrees with you, it's important to do your best to understand their point of view. Now, let's get real here for a minute, yo. This is good advice just in life. You don't have to be running for president. It's super helpful just in life in general because you're gonna have disagreements with people. It's helpful to listen, to see what somebody else has to say because maybe they'll change your mind or maybe you'll change their mind, but an open mind and open ears are essential because you have to hear. Sometimes people have something to say that makes you see things differently. And that's what, well, presidential candidates are trying to do. They're trying to make you see things their way and you have to listen. And But the same thing applies with friends and family. If you have a disagreement, you have to be polite, respectful, listen to each other because at the end of the day, everybody wants what's best, right? The presidential election begins with a primary election. This is when the candidates who will run against each other are selected. Because first there's going to be a whole bunch of them, you know, and then you have to like whittle it down to one per party, right? Right, that's how it goes. Wait a minute, don't, they're not just going to pick me? No, they're not going to just pick you, although, I mean, they might. Yeah, I think that I'm going to be like one of those landslide guys where I'm just going to go with a sweep like this. Shh. Yeah, you might because you're super cute. <laughs> but uh, if you are, if you are facing other, you know, potential candidates, I mean, who would dare run against me? Well, what if I don't want to run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were busy brushing my clothes, oh brother, oh brother, oh brother. So once selected, the public then votes on which of the candidates they want to be their president. Now, who is the public? Hey, the public is people just like you and me. When the public casts their votes, which is called the popular vote. Oh, so I get to vote? I uh, don't think that. Okay, I'm gonna vote for sure. I don't think Pickles can vote, but let's, let's not tell him. Let's just keep that between us. Now, you may think that the President of the United States is just voted on by all the people in the country and the person with the most votes wins, but it's actually not quite that simple. The President is actually elected by something called the Electoral College. The Electoral College is the people in each state vote, then the electors from that state cast their votes, and the candidate with the most electoral votes wins the election and becomes President. Hey, hey, you know who came up with the Electoral College? As a matter of fact, I do. It was Alexander Barrington. No, his name was, his name is Alexander Barrington. It's Alexander Hamilton. And there's a million things I haven't done. But I'll wait. Just you wait. Just you wait. So Electoral College, so that's a reflection of the popular vote. You can get more into that later, but that at least gives you a very good general overview. Popular vote, then the electoral vote that every state has gets submitted into this big pot of votes. Being a president is a big job. Our president should be a symbol of our country, our people, our beliefs. Voting for the best candidate for the job is a privilege. Many people in the world don't have the right to vote. I was mentioning that. That's why actually a lot of people end up coming to the United States because they don't feel they're being heard and they feel like their thoughts are being oppressed. Uh, not pressed like Red Bear with the clothes of Green Bear when he's president, but oppressed like being pushed down and they can't speak their minds. And that's why they come here because here you can speak your mind. The United States is a democracy. That means it is a government by the people. In a democracy, the people vote for their leader. Like me. Like Green Bear. This is one of the things that makes the United States of America so incredibly special. Oh, 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 hey. There's an alligator over in Florida. That's where uh, Storyteller was born. And then, oh, this is where Storyteller is right now. I mean, not on the beach in a bikini, but in California. And Storyteller also lived up here in the Northeast and also down here in Texas and also over here in the Southwest. Wow, Storyteller has lived all over the United States. And I hope that you get to travel all over your country because there are amazing things to discover out there. Now, how do you decide who you want to vote for? Equal rights for everyone. Protect the environment. Save the animals. Good schools everywhere. Don't just for all. Voting for the person who best represents the issues that matter to you is one of the most important things you can do. So I guess depending on what you think is most important, you vote for that person. Or like if, say, you really like redheads. Hmm. 
It may seem like one vote won't make a difference, but if everyone votes, it adds up to a lot of voices being heard. So remember, every vote counts. And you see people wear the sticker, I voted. Congratulations! You've earned your voting badge. Now you understand how presidential elections work and why voting is a special privilege. And right here, you can see all the important terms to know. I'll just leave it right there so you can check it out in case you want to know more about these terms like electoral vote, electoral college, the popular vote, the general election, democracy, a government by the people. I like that one a lot. So I now you know all about electing and you know who <clears throat> has a few final words for you. The flag story tone. I got it. Start doing it. Okay. So, in conclusion, I want to thank you all for being here for a lesson on how to vote for Green Bear for President in the future when I'm old enough. And I'm really hoping that they drop the age because I can't wait that long. I'm ready. I'm ready. I know you're ready. I have big, big plans. Big plans. Like, I want chocolate in every household. And I don't. Does not matter to me what kind of chocolate? Mm -mm, does not matter to Green Bear at all what kind of chocolate. It could be uh, uh, white chocolate, even though it's not really chocolate. It could be dark chocolate. It could be milk chocolate. It could be a combination of chocolates. The point is chocolate for everyone under Green Bear's plan. I desire Green Bear, and I plan to be the first Green President of these United States of America. Thank you. No, thank you, Green Bear. You're welcome. And thank you for doing your democratic duty and learning what it takes to be a good American and a good voter. See you next time, kid, on Kid Time Storytime, where we like to keep it patriotic.